Hey everybody, it's Greg Vector here, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to retouch skin in Adobe Photoshop using the frequency separation technique. All right, let's get started. All right, so the first thing we want to do is we want to duplicate our original background layer. So here we are on the background layer. Now, the shortcut, the keyboard shortcut for this on the Mac is Command J twice. On the PC, it's Control J. So now if you look, you can see we have two additional copies. We're going to call this one low. And we're going to call the one above that high. Now I suggest you watch this in full screen in HD. If I'm going too fast, just go back and watch the clips again. Now we're going to start with the low layer. Now how this works is it allows us to separate the color information and the texture of the skin. So that's how this works. So we're going to start on the low layer. We're going to unclick the eyeball there. Make sure you're clicked on low. Now we're going to come up to filter and we're going to blur this. So we're going to go to blur. Gaussian blur, and we're going to click on a blur radius. So you can see here we're on 25. If you want to look at, say, the area between the lips and the skin, I think 25 is maybe a little too much. Let's take it down to about 10 and let's look at that. So what we're looking for, you can see here if I have this little square box, if we go to various areas on the skin and click, we can see if there's texture in those areas. So I think a radius of 10 pixels works on this image. This was shot on the Nikon D810 with the 85 mil, the 1.4G lens. And this is a 16-bit image. It went from raw, so it's a 16-bit. So the Gaussian blur radius we're going to choose is 10. Now the next step is to go up to the high layer. So we're going to click on that. Now once you're on the high layer, you go up to Image, Apply Image. Now this is going to change if you're working on a 16-bit or an 8-bit. This is the formula for 16-bit images. Now we go to layer, we go to low, which is the one we created that's below this one. We go to blending mode of add, you can see there. Now if you were going to do an 8-bit, you would choose subtract instead of add there. And instead of the 2 and the 0, you would have 2 and 128. That's for 8-bit. This is for 16-bit. So it's low, blending mode of add, scale 2, offset 0, invert, now when I say OK, it looks like a high pass filter type image. So now we want to go back to the high layer on the right. We want to go to the blending mode and we want to change that to linear light. Now you can see that it looks like a regular image. Now the next step is to group these so we can toggle it on and off to see if our changes are working. Now in order to do that, if you click on the low and the high with the shift applied, now we can use a shortcut. Command G or Control G on the PC. We'll just call this FS. So what we've done is we've created the low layer, the high layer. We've applied the Gaussian blur to the low. We've done the apply image technique to the high. And now we've separated the skin texture and the color. So different on each layer. Now the advantages of this is now that we can use the healing brush to clean up blemishes and we won't be dragging color into those areas and then we can deal with just the color area separately. So let's start with doing some healing first. So I'm going to zoom in, command plus or control plus on your keyboard will allow you to do that. Now you can see we have some stray hairs on the forehead. We have a couple of blemishes there and we're going to be working on the high layer. So if we come up over here to the healing brush, you can see healing brush tool. And what we want to do is sample nearby texture. And now we're not worried about dragging color in. So we're going to just hold the Option key or the Alt key, and we're going to sample. Now, one thing you want to be clear about here is if you go over to the left-hand side, and you see there's a little eyedropper tool above the healing brush right there, the eyedropper tool. When you click on that, you'll see a sample here. You'll see point sample, 3x3, 5x5, 11x11. Check to see that you're around 5.5 for your sample, and that's going to sample nearby area. Now, again, clicking on the healing brush, we're going to sample nearby using the Option key or the Alt key, and we're just going to click here, and then we're going to paint over. And so this will allow us to not drag colors, because you'll find sometimes if you use this and you're near, say, a hairline, and you're trying to clean up hairs, it'll often take that color and drag it in, and then it becomes a bit of a problem. So you can see here, I'll just go quickly through this. I prefer the healing brush over the spot healing brush 
for this type of thing. It just does a better job because it allows you to choose the sample point instead of Photoshop. At least that's how I feel about it, although some people probably prefer the spot healing brush because it is a little quicker in some cases. So I'm just sampling nearby with the Option key or the Alt key on the PC, and then I'm just painting over and I'm just cleaning things up. So I'll show you how we're progressing on this, and then I'll show you how we can work on the color layer separately. Now also too, be conscious of the color areas and the areas of texture that you're sampling as well. Those are important things to consider while you're doing this. And, you know, it's going to take a bit of time. This isn't a fast technique. This isn't, a, you know, a plug-in that you just apply and have perfect skin. But this is a, I guess you could say, a very detailed and accurate way of preserving the skin and the color from the original image, but allowing you to clean up the image and make the skin look a little more professional, pro-looking skin image, if that makes any sense. All right, so I'm just going to keep cleaning this up and then I'll show you what this looks like. So again, this is just the healing brush and I'm just sampling. So I sample nearby and then I just paint over. And then if you find you don't like what you did there, you can always just tweak it. Just look for a cleaner area of the skin as you sample. And I'll just keep going here just a little bit, just get this a little more refined. And then I'll just sort of show you here. So we can just toggle this group on and off. And now you can see that I've cleaned up the hairs and some blemishes, and you can go as far as you want on this. Now, the next part is going to allow us to blend some of the light and dark areas for a smoother transition. So that was the high layer. We were working on the blemishes and removing hairs and things like that, like for example here. And if we came down here, we can see we have a little bit of a hair there. We have a little bit of a mark there. So that's a good technique for that. But sometimes you want to just sort of even out the skin area. You want to even out the lighting on the skin to make it look a little more smooth. Because sometimes if you're you know, shooting in natural light or your flash is very harsh, you're going to have bright and dark areas and it may appear to be a little blotchy. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on the low layer. Now, one thing too I want to show you is we're going to go up to the lasso tool here. The lasso tool, look in the box that says feather. This might vary slightly, but we want to feather the edges here. So I have it set to 25 pixels. And now what we're going to do is we're going to take an area of, say, light to dark, and we're going to smooth out that transition area. So you can see here above her left eye, or her right eye, but it looks left to us. See how we have this bright area above the eye? Now what we're going to do is we're just going to sample some of this area with the lasso tool. And we're going to use it to blend that transition from light to dark to smooth out that area. Now, to do that, we can come up to Filter, and we can go Blur, Gaussian Blur. Now, when we have this up, we can drag this slider, for example, to see how this is going to look. So you can see here we have this area sampled, and it's going to blur and create more of a transition. Now we can drag this up as much as we want, but if we go too far, what will happen is the edges you'll see get a little dark. So we don't want to go that far. But if we go too low, then nothing will happen. So I suggest starting around maybe 25, a radius of 25 pixels. We're going to click OK. Now to deselect that area, I click Command D. Now let's just toggle this on and off. So we've got our group here, and let's just look at this area above the eye. And you can see that we've got our hairs that are cleaned up and it's smoothed out some of that transition. So I'll show you a couple more examples so you get a better idea of how that works. So we'll go to the cheek area here, click on the low layer, and you can see we have that highlight on her cheek and then we have that darker area. Now we don't want to get rid of the highlight entirely, but we want that to be a smoother transition. So what we can do is we can just sample that area, the lasso tool, go up, and now that we've chosen our radius, all we have to do is click on that again, and that'll apply our 25 pixels there. So I'll do it in a couple places, and then you'll probably see a better idea. Now this is a very subtle technique, Gaussian Blur. Now you can see that was a little more effective in that area. Now we could take that here, again, here on the cheek. And so we're really just going around, and we're just 
smoothing those transitions from dark to light. So for example, here we could do that as well on the top of this highlight. Now, this isn't going to work if you get too close to say a dark color like an eyebrow. So be conscious of where you're doing this. Now, Command D to deselect. Now, if I toggle on and off, look at her cheekbone, look at the highlight above, look at the shadow below, and just watch how that sort of has a smoother, softer transition. So looking there, I'll zoom in so you can see it right here. Now, if I click on and off, you can see it just sort of smoothed out that shadow detail, just sort of made a smoother transition. So you would use these two techniques in combination. So clearing blemishes, stray hairs on the high layer, and then smoothing out some color toning on the low layer. Now, an advanced technique is you can create a layer between the low and the high. So if you come down here and create a new layer, now this will allow you to sample color and brightness and bring that into a darker layer. I'll save that for another video that's a little bit more complicated, but basically use this technique to separate the texture from the color. So that's the basis of that. Now let me go through it one more time to recap how to set this up. So we'll just get rid of this entirely. You've got your background layer, for example. We're going to duplicate that. Command J twice or Control J. We'll just label it. We'll call this low. Keeping in mind, this is a 16-bit image. And so we have our low and our high. We're just going to uncheck that eyeball. We're on the low. We're going to go filter. We're going to go blur, Gaussian blur. And then we have that blur radius we were just using recently. We'll go near the lips so we can see that. I think something like 10 is probably fine for this image. It might vary slightly depending on how this was shot. Now we'll go back up to the high layer. We go up to image. We go up to apply image. It's a 16 bit, so the formula is layer low. Blending mode add, scale two, offset zero. Invert checked, okay. Then we go to the blend mode here on the high layer. We choose linear light. Now we have our frequency separation. We're going to group that. We're going to hold the shift key. Make sure that both of these are highlighted. Command G on the Mac or Control G. We can call our group whatever we want. I'll call it FS. And then that's how you create your frequency separation. And then you have the low color layer, the high texture layer, the high layer. You can use the healing brush, the clone stamp tool, low layer. You can use that technique with the lasso tool and you can just sort of blur transitions. If you want to get really advanced, you can create a layer between the two and you can use your brush key and you can sample areas and then blend them into other areas. But be very careful when you start messing around with highlights and shadows, you can really change the shape of someone's face. Like I said, that's a little bit more of an advanced technique. I'll save that for another video. Anyway, thanks for watching this video. If you have any comments or questions, you can post them in the comment box below. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button. Also click on share and share this video freely on forums, photography groups, Facebook, Twitter, whatever you want, share this. And if you're not already a subscriber, just click that subscribe button. And if you see the little bell notification, click on that. And if I go live, it'll send you a notification of any live streams that I do. All right, it's Craig back to here. Thanks for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one.